Hi, guys. It is a gorgeous starlit night here uh, in the collapse of everything in Dunnell in Florida here on this beautiful, it is, I think, a Wednesday night, February 7th, 2024. And I guess in Santa Barbara, California, it, it, they're having a howling uh, rainstorm, an arc storm pouring down on top of my uh, good buddy, Elliot Jacobson. So in case anyone who doesn't know me, I, I think I'm Sam Mitchell. And this is my good friend, Elliot Jacobson. So assuming, guys, that uh, the universe doesn't have the last laugh in the middle of a, a Collapse Chronicles climate casino. Uh, <laughs> Man, <laughs> that, that, we're going to have it, have the... Uh, have it collapse because of the climate, which would be hilarious. And on one hand, I hope it does. Like towards the end, it would be hilarious. But anyway, guys, here's what we're going to that Elliot and I have gotten together for your uh, viewing pleasure. I'm not going to rehash this uh, this painful interview that I heard Elliot Jacobson. <laughs> This man, even if I wanted to say the guy's name, I couldn't, I can't remember. It's not important. But anyway, Elliot had an interview with this apocaloptimist. Uh, we all know, uh, you know, who an apocaloptimist is. It's someone, not a clueless moron. They understand that we're fucked. But they think it's just going to turn out okay anyway. Now, we're going to turn this. Uh, freight train around, and in that interview, uh, Elliot mentioned that he had a list of ain't gonna happens, and, and he's giving me credit for coming up with the Doomer term ain't gonna happen, A-G-H. That's not anthropogenic greenhouse gases, A-G-H. It ain't gonna happen that all of these Doomers, especially, well, these apocaloptimists dispewing this hot air on and on and on and on how we're just going to just going to make a few little tweaks to global industrial civilization and we're just going to go right on about our business like nothing happened uh, in the past 200 years that nothing happened here and we're just going to move on with some little tweaks. And, and I think Elliot and I are getting, we're, we're, we're just completely fed up with this horseshit. It ain't going to happen. So uh, I don't know how this is going to unfold. I'm going to let uh, Elliot start off his list. And then, so we're going to, I'm going to compare my list with Elliot's list. And we would love some comments of any that we don't think of. Now, we're not going to have time to get in very deep into any of them. And I think there's going to be one we're going to have a little, some fun with, where I actually am going to defend the apocaloptimist that, uh, that, that Elliot was interviewed by. So we'll see. That'll come up at some point. Uh, but Elliot Jacobson, come on and say hi. We all know who you are, brother. Uh, and, and start down your list of ain't going to happens. Hey, Sam. So it is pouring rain right now. I'm in my garage and it is loud. And if you can't hear that, I can hardly hear. And it's we actually have like a tornado watch, if you can believe it, here in Santa Barbara's all things. Anyway, you do get credit for this. You get 100% credit. Ain't going to happen, list. Because we were having a conversation. We are just talking about how everybody just always is coming up with solutions and coming up with solutions. So what I did is I went uh, on Twitter and asked for some, and then I thought of some myself. I actually have over 40 ain't going to happen. And uh, 30, but I could have easily have over 40. I thought we were doing 30. So I, yeah, well, 30, I, just, but I could yeah. easily go on all night long with them. So, so my very first category of ain't going to happen. These are things that, 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 People say we have to do this stuff, you know, to avoid the uh, collapse, right? These are the things, you know, that that people will suggest um, as reasons or ways or we have to do this stuff. So my first general category, I call global government and industry. 
right? So this this is wow. I don't even have that category. Okay. So I'm going to lead it with James Hansen's. We need a new political party that's untouched by special interest money. James Hansen's solution for the planet: a new political party. Um, I I agree. It's not on my list, but I agree. Ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. <laughs> And the fossil fuel industry, just stop fossil fuels, hundred percent, no more fossil fuels. And you see this one all the time, right? Like, like everybody's saying, end fossil fuels. Is it now? Now that is going to happen, all right? Right. In some sense, all of these are going to happen once civilization collapses, right? So we have to be a little bit cautious here. Um, but we, you know, th this idea that somehow we're going to end the fossil fuel industry, you know, that that like like. Uh, you know, shipping and trains and boats and trucks, you know, and all the other ways we use it for concrete and everything else. What do you think? Are we going to end? Well, now, now I, I didn't exactly have that on my list, but I have the entire category of bright green lye renewable energy category, which we'll get into. So, I mean, certainly that's it, that, 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 that's implied in my whole category, but, but there, there, there's no damn way. As much as I wish we, as I've said many times, I wish to hell we would just stop oil. If we just stop oil, humans would be extinct. Uh, that is an issue. It, it, certainly the population of the planet would be cut in half within three I mean, months, three to six months, four I billion. Mean, who, who I needs, would be dead. Yeah, who needs fertilizers for uh, <laughs> farming, right? So I, I am mean, in full support of just stopping oil <laughs> so uh, we can get humans off the planet since humans are 100% dependent on oil, whereas every bit as dependent on oil as we are oxygen and water and food. Food is oil because we eat oil. So anyway, obviously that was just like implied in my whole list of 30, but go on. We're, we're in total agreement so far, brother. So, Next, so uh, you know, um, let's see. I have one here, a quote from... Um, the UN Climate Change Executive Secretary, we must see more climate action this decade if we're to achieve carbon neutrality and ultimately the 1.5 degree goal. All right, the 1.5 degree goal, 1.5 C, staying under 1.5 C, is that going to happen? I, I cannot believe I, I do not have that on my list. So th this is great. I, I am embarrassed, guys. I am absolutely uh, embarrassed that I did not put that one, and uh, I would I, I would add two degrees to that, and certainly two and a half would be thirty one on the list. So, yeah. So, um, but one and a half, forget it. Uh, obviously, what a joke. Do you think we're going to get to, to net zero CO2 by 2050? All right, we got one. Okay. <laughs> net zero, uh, the, the whole concept of net zero is a bunch of smoke and mirrors, and, it, and it's just an accounting trick. Uh, just, just like my accountant used to get rid of about $10,000 of income taxes I paid every year. Uh, it's bullshit uh, on a, uh, from the word go. A ain't ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna even if they even even if they say it did happen, it didn't happen. <laughs> Do you agree with that? I uh, yeah I'm no. There's that. I mean there's just no way we're I mean the the sorts of account and I love how you said accounting tricks because that's really what it is right now right where where one country like Germany or France yeah. will say oh we're net zero right now we're generating all our electricity renewably right but. What they're doing is they're importing wood pellets from, you know, the boreal forest out of Canada or something, right? Out so, of Florida, you know, out of, it, out of right down the street from me. It's the southeast U.S. that is getting bashed worse than the Amazon rainforest over this damn wood pellets thing. But anyway. Yeah, but of course, I, you know, I, the trees the trees are going to grow back, right? I, so, it, so it's net zero, right? <laughs> Yeah, I, I I have reforestation on my uh, on my list, so uh, we we might as well mention that one now. This whole concept of reforestation is literally a bright green line. Yeah, uh, yeah, on, yeah. On, on, on so many levels. Yeah, and that we're going 
when, when, when they talk, I don't, I don't give a damn, Elliot, how many trees we plant. We are not going to be planting old growth ecosystems where we're going to be planting cornfields. Uh, they're going to have the biodiversity of a cornfield. Uh, all, all of this crap uh, about I, I am in full support of, uh, of reforestation. Ain't gonna, we're, we're not going to replant the Amazon rainforest. It's going to hit that tipping point uh, if it hasn't already, and it ain't coming back. Yeah, I don't and, and, how many trees uh, right. Donald Trump plants. This idea that we're going to plant one trillion trees or two trillion trees, right? But I mean, there, you know, if you actually look what's happening with these replanting, a lot of these these trees are just dying, right? They're because we're, you know, they're trying to plant them into an ecosystem that's not the same as when when uh, you know the, they took the trees out of there. You know, they're they're now in droughts or heat waves, and these little poor little saplings that are dropping from helicopters by the thousands are just dying. You know. So yeah, and no. well, their future charcoal briquettes is, is what yeah. we're, 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 we're planting. We're, we're planting charcoal briquettes is what we're planting. Any of that survive are, are going to get turned into uh, charcoal uh, after global industrial civilization collapses, which is a whole other rant for another day. I, I got. I have one more in this category. Actually, I have a couple more, but I'm just going to do one more, and then we'll move on to you. But the one yeah. other one I want to mention here is this global carbon fee. This, you know, have you heard about the global carbon oh, yeah. tax? You know, where where everybody is going to have to pay a tax on the carbon, according to. I mean, look what just happened in France with the farmers, right? Who who were, uh, I don't know if you know this story. If you've been following, you know the whole yeah, idea yeah, yeah. that that they had to sort of uh, start paying for the methane that they were, um, you know, releasing, and and somehow that was, you know, they had to meet this goal of thirty percent methane reduction, right? That is the Glasgow Compact. Um, and, and they just said, we can't do it. It's too expensive. And so they started just parking their tractors and blocking traffic with, you know, so that they, and now, and now the EU is backtracked on, uh, uh, on methane, right. On the, this climate pledge. So this whole idea of a global carbon fee is it's, there's no way that. Well, that's yeah, well the qu quickest way to start a riot is, is to raise the price of a gallon of gas. Uh, it, it is the quickest way to start a riot. Uh, raise the price of gas and end fossil fuel subsidies, and you will have social unrest within 24 hours. Uh, you will you will have uh, social unrest. So, uh, I mean, I, what this one really reminds me of is that you know, collab, uh, um, climate uh, mitigation is great. As long as somebody else is doing it, someone else is paying for it, right? The pain is some other guy. But when it's you, right? Yeah, you, yeah. You know, you're you're like, screw this. Why do I have to do this? When you know, and this this is this is over and over again why these these policies are failing. And and you know, Europe has just had had this huge backtrack and this movement to the right. And you know, um, what is it? Was it Argentina that just elected the super right? Yeah, yeah. You know, they guy who's rejecting all climate stuff, and they got rid of Bozo Nero and got that guy in right next. Anyway, <laughs> so, so, so that's what I think about the global carbon fee. I got a couple more. I'll, maybe I'll bring up later, but I, I want to turn it over to you, my friend. Well, so give me a couple that ain't going to happen. You you don't even have this category uh, because this uh, anyone who knows me knows the the number. Uh, one, I bet I have uh, a category. In my mind is overpop is, is is bringing down the number of humans. Population control, right there. Okay, you do have it. Yeah. Do. Well, my my number one ain't gonna happen. Of course, the number one on the top of the list is the voluntary human extinction movement. I, I I'm once again gonna brag on myself. I am a, a gold medal. I, I have the gold star, which is getting yourself sterilized before having your first child, that you're childless and sterilized. So I am a card carrying member, gold star. It, it's never going to happen to anybody uh, on any level thinking that uh, humans are, are, are going to voluntarily 
let our species go extinct uh, is a well no one believes this i mean VHEM, I mean, it's kind of a joke on one level, but it just it's just to shock people into the, I mean, that one in there. On the other um, hand, it's really the only solution there is, right? I mean, if you want to talk about like a solution that is going to be painless, um, you know, way to, to reduce humanity down to a level where we don't collapse, right? The really the only viable solution Bob is to he yeah, has to a massive reduction. In, in, in offspring, right? And and then let people die from old age. And, and you know, in uh, 50 years or 75 years, we'll be down to 100 million or 500 million or whatever. And you, 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 know. hit, the, uh, you hit the second line on my thing, right <laughs> under extinction. I have a ever going to, I mean, talking voluntarily, I have 500 million, you know, the, the former right. now blown up Georgia Guidestones recommendation. Five or, or the Jack Alpert 100 million. And it, 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 it not only we're we not getting to zero voluntarily, uh, we're, we're not voluntarily uh, uh, going to get to 500 million or 100 million. You can you can make all the guidestones you want. You can make all your your YouTube videos you want. How we need to have a maximum global population of 100 million on it. it, it it, it, now it is going to happen, and yes. it's going to happen that we're going to to go extinct, obviously. But I'm just talking voluntarily. It, it, it it's the last thing. But there there's a little, even though there's a little, people are are getting a little bit encouraged that more and more young people are choosing not to have children, which is the one ray of good news on the planet. But it's not going to be enough. Yeah, it, it, yeah. right. Uh, Overall, the population of the planet is still going up. So, you know, the, the idea that, that yeah, some countries, maybe China or Japan or something, are now going net negative, right? But no, overall, the global population is still going up. And, and you know, we're up over 8 billion now, you know. and, and we, we overshot it, you know, 1 billion we overshot. So it, it, all, all of this shit that you read about, population stabilization stabilizing the population at eight billion that's like stabilizing the number of fleas on sancho at eight billion right you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, 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 that, that's an absurd statement the very statement population stabilization on a planet of eight billion people is an absurd statement on the face of it this this whole bullshit about it anyway and my third one, which I guarantee you is not on your on your list, I am the only person who I have ever said, Andy the gardener, have you ever even said that? And that is sterilizing immigrants. And this is any country. Not on my not list. On, that's not on your list. <laughs> if, 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 if you or I want to move to Somalia, well, I'm already sterilized, but if if, if you are able to have children and you want to move to Somalia, I, I am 100% in, in, in favor of the Somalian government forcing you to get sterilized before you move to Somalia, okay? This is not a racist, eugenicist statement. The, the, the Sam Mitchell Collapse Chronicles immigration policy, any country that anybody moves to, vasectomy, Clinic on the right, tubal ligation on the left for you, for, for every man, woman, and child. And, and if we would do that, uh, that would be a great step forward. And, uh, th and at that point, I am 100% in open borders all over the planet. I so I'm, I'm going to claim I have that one on my <laughs> list. Because what I have here is controlled population decline through global policy, right? So what you're saying uh, is a global policy, right? Like a global policy, you enter another country, uh, you, you know, you have to never breed. You have to have some- Okay, so you actually agree with my immigration policy. Well, <laughs> I mean, I, I'm all for open borders, put it that way. I, I don't think any country deserves uh, the resources that it has. Or, you know, all humans are equal all over the planet. 
But, you know, if you want to use artificial borders as a way to uh, sort of uh, motivate people to not have offspring, that your policy would be a way to do that. I have two others under population I want to give you. Those are my three. That's really my three. Uh, I got two more. Okay. So you know how in this country they give tax incentives if you have kids like tax deductions? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Completely do going. away with tax deductions for children. It, and, and and a tax that, that you should do a tax credit for not breeding because you're not putting any burden uh, on the school system, on the local roads. Uh, I, it, 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 us non-breeders, uh, we sh- are the ones who should be getting the tax breaks. We're not the ones overburdening all of these systems. We are lightening the load on these systems. I, I, I have never had a child in a public school in my entire life, and, and I know I have paid over in my lifetime well over $100,000 in taxes to uh, to educate uh, breeders' children to, to to become little cogs in 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 this wheel. So yeah, I I I'm, I can't believe I didn't think of that, but I'm a hundred. I, I have one more, which I think is really the one you just said, but but phrased slightly differently. I have tax incentives for childless families. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what I have written, and a penalty if you have multiple kids. Yeah. So, you know, not only do you do you don't get any incentives, but if you have a lot of kids, you, you know, get a penalty. So I well, think, I think we're, China, we're, I, I, I think they tried, China tried that out. And, yeah, and, and I understand that it kept 400 million people off of this planet. I, I think it was the greatest. Uh, it, was, it was the single greatest policy that I ever heard of uh, in my life. And now, of course they've thrown it completely out the window. Yeah, uh, because they have a bunch of old people and no one to take care of them. So, (laughs) you know, Um, so none of this- We're not that category. So what's your, what is your next category? I just want to, I just want to make clear that all the things we just said about population, they're not going to happen. But, oh, of course. (laughs) Right. (laughs) <laughs> These are all of the not going to happen list. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Oh, that, okay. That we, you and I are sure not that... like like saying we want this to happen. We're saying these aren't going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, uh, we don't want people to get confused uh, the uh, of the the germ of this. Uh... Right. Okay, your next category, brother. I, I'm liking this so far. I'm waiting for our one that we're going to disagree on. It's got to be coming up pretty soon. Techno-optimism and apocaloptimism is my next category. Techno okay, and apocalyptic. It's probably going to happen in here. Right? You lead off. All right. Uh, global nuclear power build out. Uh, I've got that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we agree. Yeah. That ain't going to happen. Um, let's see. Uh, geoengineering. Like like a massive, and I got I have I have four different geoengineering. Uh, are- okay, here we go. Here we go. I'm one. I'm with you probably on three of them. All right, so I'm going to guess the one I th- I'm going to save the one I think that you say will happen to last. So the okay. first the first one that will never happen is refreezing the Arctic or Antarctic or installing a hundred kilometer underwater fence under Antarctica. I I do not have that one on the list, but if I if I realized we had forty five instead of thirty, I probably would have. <laughs> that one's not on my list, but I agree that obviously is never going to happen. Uh, geo, uh, a, a giant parasol in outer space. Uh, I, I, obviously, okay, we agree on that one. That's on both of our lists. That, that's no way. The mere reflection project putting. Thank you, brother. Putting um, um, essentially a, a mirrors the size of the United States somewhere out in the ocean, right? Not going to happen. Yeah, that ain't, yeah, yeah, ain't, ain't going to happen. The one you think is going to happen. Yeah. That will never happen at the scale needed, uh, okay. right? Is stratospheric aeros- uh, aerosols. Yeah. Okay. So here we go. That so and, and what a lot. What 
folks need to remember on a, on a one of the major things on these techno optimism things is what people do not talk about it in the mainstream media and clueless morons is scale. What whatever they are, even the mirror project might you know what I'm talking about. But but what people do not talk about is scale. But the uh, solar radiation management, which the, you know the chemtrail wackos would call chemicals, that's essentially what they are. Uh, I have been uh, talking about this. Uh, it, I used to be a chemtrail wacko. I'm no longer a chemtrail wacko, but I've never moved the needle. I mean, when I first went down the Duma rabbit hole in 2008, this is the one I predicted. Now, I did get it wrong. I predicted by 2020 they would be doing it. It would be just a, a, just a regular news story in the New York Times and 95% of clueless morons on the planet would be cheering it on. Now, they're going to do it. The mainstream media, everyone's going to get behind it. But surprisingly, and I got to give the man credit, I remember saying this, when Alex Jones and Al Gore are are saying the, the same thing, when those two guys, Alex Jones and Al Gore, are, are pretty much verbatim making the same warning, you might want to listen. Uh, I, I, I would normally never listen to either one of those dudes, but when they're both saying the same thing that from from those two different planets uh warning about this uh al, al gore is a vocal uh, opponent of these things uh, there is uh hold who is the woman who just who wrote the book was, was it elizabeth colbert or no someone else the, a very intelligent interview i heard on uh actually on npr i'm sorry i I haven't read the book. I think it's called something like Under a Milky White Sky. Uh, you know, under, uh, well, so, uh, Under the Sky We uh, Make. Under the something Sky We like Make. That. Yeah. But uh, uh, I, I am, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm not putting him past it one bit. Now, it's going to fail miserably. It's not going to achieve the goal and it and what it's going to do is uh, like every time, every single time we try to solve one problem, I I, I say cane toads is my uh, is my uh, as, uh, cane toads is is my response to to, to, to anybody uh, supporting uh, solar radiation is cane toads. Uh, it, it, it they're they're going to do it. And it, it's going to be, it could be just the, 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 the final straw. And it's just going to be sad. It, 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 I mean, it, it's going it, to, it, you're just going to kiss goodbye, blue sky. I, I, I mean, future, assuming there are such a thing as future generations. It, 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 and what I've never understood, what does it mean for starlight? At night, they they always talk about the blue skies during the day, but uh, I don't even know what it's gonna what it's gonna do for astronomy. But uh, so, why are you so confident that these mad scientists uh, are, are aren't gonna aren't gonna pull this out of their hat? Why are you, why are you and I disagreeing on this? Well, so I I, I think it is a matter of scale, but. Um... So we could argue that uh, stratospheric aerosols have already happened. I mean, in some sense, the fact that they were in shipping fuels and, yeah, yeah. you know, industrial manufacturing and, and other things, you know, we have been putting stratospheric aerosols up there for, you know, generations, right? So we have to be really specific that what we mean here is the intentional stratospheric release of sulfur dioxide by a massive on a massive scale, like like this company in Mexico or whatever that that you know shot the balloon up that had two grams of sulfur yeah. dioxide in it, right? We're talking about a massive scale, yeah. which, is, which is literally hundreds of tankers, uh, you know, with flying up to the maximum elevation they can, releasing sulfur dioxide twenty four seven, round the clock, 
forevermore, right? We're talking about, yeah. um, you know, a worldwide fleet of uh, uh, airplanes, you know, that, that are doing this together with the manufacturing of the sulfur and, yeah. the, you know, all the all the infrastructure that goes with it. And then we have to worry about what happens when they stop, right? The, uh, yeah, the, the termination shock, right? Yeah. That when you stop this thing. So it's a question of scale, right? What will... Uh, what would it actually take to do this? Now, one of the, the things you could think about is like Mount Pinatubo, right? Release all this sulfur dioxide. If you compare that to like how much sulfur dioxide shipping fuel has released. Over I'm the not sure it went as high up in the, we were using stratospheric versus atmospheric, but I, well, mean, I okay. don't really know. So you got to put it up in the stratosphere because you don't get it up high enough. It'll just sort of yeah. precipitate well, out. I'm not sure week. shipping fuel was getting it up. It wasn't high getting up there. No, and Mount yeah. Pinatubo did, right? So shipping fuels come out very quickly. But but the point is that shipping fuels actually put up more sulfur than, than Mount Pinatubo. Yeah. So, you know, it is they were an ongoing sort of uh, geoengineering project that we stopped, you know, this year. And, and, you know, there are people out there and, and Hansen is one of them that are yeah. arguing that, that, you know, we have tipped into a new climate reality because we've ended this geoengineering project that we've been carrying on for, you know, decades and decades. So uh, I just, I, I think we'll try, I'm going to agree with you. We're going to try this because uh, it's an inevitability that we are going to have to try something, Right. But but I also think it's it we don't have the global willpower or money or you know we'll do it in a small amount and then we'll stop and it won't make a difference. Okay, I I I, I hope you're right. Uh, it, it, well, it, 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 I I one hundred percent agree with you on that part. The part is, are we? The, the point is, are we going to stop? Uh, and, and and before we really fuck something up, you, you, you know, seriously gone from the frying pan into the fire. But it's one of these things, uh, you know, a uh, uh, hundred. But it's it, one of the major frying pan versus the fire. Uh, it, you know, when when Paul Beckwith was still speaking to me. The way when I was interviewing him, he got frustrated uh, with me because uh, I think he's moved on from chemtrails to cloud brightening or, or something. But anyway, I, I I know Paul got frustrated with me that if we don't do anything, Sam, we're 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 fucked. But I'm looking whether we do or we don't. Uh, if fossil fuels, renewable energy. A solar radiation management or not, they, these are all of these why, why we're doomed. Whether we're, de we're doomed if we do, doomed if we don't. Uh, and, and this is a major classic example uh, of how we box ourselves in. Uh, so uh, let me just give a couple more real quick because I want to move back to you. And, and you know, the, there's so many of these things that, that you know, I don't want to just use up all the time on this one. Let me yeah, just yeah, let me give you on. let me give you one. I don't want you to respond to it. All right. All right. The other geoengineering was something that Housefather said. Uh, I was reading this on Twitter one time. He said, if it comes down to it and it's a question of human extinction versus geoengineering, and the only available geoengineering is lighting off a bunch of nukes to create a, a nuclear oh, winter, Jesus. right? He would be in favor of the nukes. All right, <laughs> enough. That's, that's well, never going to happen. The person claims Paul Beckwith is in favor of that. So anyway, but we'll uh, let we'll let Guy and Paul have that fight. But... One more. I got one more. Carbon capture and storage. Oh, well, obviously that will. So I, yeah, yeah, carbon capture and storage that doesn't even uh, deserve thirty seconds of uh, of two people uh, with uh, any sort of a brain. That 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 that's one of the biggest bullshit ones. So let me start over there. But I think we've covered most of them already. Yeah. So we, we that 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 was exactly mine. So we had that same category. So let me jump up to cause the 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 categories. I I called it lifestyle choices 
uh, sustainability, which kind of spilled into the bright green light choices uh, with, with energy. So it, it's like two, but let me, uh, uh, so I, I just basically with the lifestyle choices and the sustainability is it, it, I just put at the top of the list sustainable anything uh, on, on a planet of 8 billion people nothing is sustainable nothing is sustainable uh, if, if, if 8 billion I don't give a shit what lifestyle choice 8 billion people are making it's, it's unsustainable. A, a population of 8 billion people. So the, the very concept of, of sustainability and, and that's your puny little individual uh, lifestyle choices, changing your damn light bulbs or whatever, uh, putting a blanket around your water heat or whatever the hell it is, it, 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 it's absurd. They're, 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 you cannot have the discussion about sustainability on a planet of 8 billion people. So I was concerned that I didn't have sustainable when I was I was looking <laughs> everywhere for it. I finally I do have it, all right? My category that sounds like your category yeah. is titled political and social transformation. All right? Political yeah, yeah, and social. Yeah. And so well, I, I'm thinking more of an uh, where the individual meets that. So like underneath that we we we've heard about sustainable beef production sustainable fishing there is no such thing as sustainable beef production or sustainable fishing and and then it's the, it's kind of another way of saying voluntarily reducing your uh, your ecological footprint now how like how you put your foot up I've there done, i've done it but but nobody else i've done a couple of rounds recently i don't know uh anybody else who's done it i, I say i was given a uh, guy mcpherson credit he did it up until he met polly and then uh that that went out the window when he met her but uh, it can be done but but even though i have reduced my own uh ecological footprint i would i would say by 90 percent i'm it's still way too big i'm not kidding myself uh, I, 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 I went from 50 Ugandans to, uh, to 10 Ugandans. Uh, so I can't talk about a, a couple in Uganda having eight children because the whole family is equal, is equal to me. But just, uh, just any sort of, of, of voluntarily reducing footprint. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop with this next one before we get into the bright green lives and the energy. But that's a whole. But the but but this one I know you've been dealing with this one as uh, the vegan diet. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that's that's definitely in my list. Parentheses, including lab grown meat. I don't that have lab grown meat in my way with that one. That you're going to be able to eat your lab grown meat, and so that the, the the whole vegan lifestyle. Uh, here, here we go. We're going to stir up the, the hornet's nest that Derek Jensen has stirred up. I've stirred up. It, 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 it's, I am 100% in support, Elliot, of, of, of vegans. I have never said I, I am not in support of self-righteous vegans. Well, okay. Um... Uh, I would agree I, with you. I'm in support of vegans too. I don't have any. I I think it's great what they're doing. It's fabulous. Absolutely. Good for them. Yeah. If they think for one second, for one second, that their vegan lifestyle, then that that somebody, some little hippie chick in in, in Eugene, Oregon, uh, eating chickpeas instead of chicken is doing a goddamn thing to save this planet on a planet of 8 billion people. She She's every bit as clueless as, as, as you know what I'm saying. Well, I think I, I fully support her, 100% support her decision. But it's just these, these self-righteous people, especially vegan breeders. Uh, they, 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 these vegan, <laughs> a, 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 a vegan breeder giving me shit uh, uh, about, uh, and I don't eat beef or seafood under my sustainable beef and seafood. 
but I do eat it. Any if it doesn't come out of the ocean or it's not a cow, I eat it. But but any vegan breeder giving a non breeder omnivore shit, I got no time for you. You're you're so clueless that I I, I got no time for your nonsense. So so uh, the topic here is ain't gonna happen. So just to clarify, what isn't going to happen is that there's going to be a massive worldwide movement to veganism. It's going to be totally opposite. Every year, the amount of meat consumption on this planet rises. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't. I'm just guessing wildly. My guess is if, if we looked up the statistic, I am saying in the certainly in the last 20 years, probably in the last 10 years, that this planet has consumed is consuming twice as much animal protein every year than we were even 10 years ago. And, and, and I guarantee you, I don't care how many little hippie chicks in Eugene, Oregon are eating their chickpeas tonight, uh, there's going to be more uh, animal protein including beef and seafood being consumed on this planet 10 years from now than there are now. Uh, so uh, once again, I 100% support uh, vegans making that lifestyle. It ain't gonna do a damn thing to save this planet. Ain't, it ain't gonna happen. Ain't gonna happen. So, so let me let me do my category that's similar to yours because there's a lot right. of overlap. Uh, a lot of people say we're going to end capitalism. What we need to do on the planet is end capitalism. There's no way we're going to end capitalism. I mean, yeah, when when society crumbles, right? Yeah. But, but I mean, all right. Um, we're not going to eliminate the 1%, you know, somehow get rid of the top 1% by taxing them or, or eating them or uh, whatever we need to do. Um, we're not going to do a massive switch to a hydrogen technology, uh, uh, fuel technology. We're not going to switch all our cars to hydrogen. Just like uh, okay. Before we get into to, to the energy, the renewable, I just I just want to add to end capitalism. The one I had right next to it was corporate responsibility. It's a it, it's an absolute oxymoron. Uh, there is no such thing as corporate responsibility. It's all that the reason we're not going to end capitalism is because there is no such thing as corporate responsibility. And I better put in the battery in this computer real quick. Oh boy, which side is it on? Well, no, did I make it in time? Yes. Can you still hear me? I can. All right. Good for uh, you. So corporate responsibility is is one of the main reasons. So now that you said hydrogen, obviously people are are wondering when in the hell are these two doomers gonna gonna get to the whole bright green light uh, renewable energy thing? So uh, let's hear your list and uh, see if I can can add any to it. All trucks, oh, trains, military, and agricultural machinery go electric. And that's not on my list, but it, but but I will certainly put it here. Ain't gonna happen. All right. Um, let's see. I you know transitional a uh, uh, transition to sustainable communities. You already had that one. Um, you know I don't think I really have the bright green lies. Um, but I do have the vegan right here. Let's see. Uh, end plastic packaging. Uh, um, a green energy transition to 100% renewables. Yeah, just a whole renewable thing. Uh, do, I, do, I, do I just need to go, go to, for it? Get, uh, okay. You have more on that the, than the, I do. The no shit Sherlock. The big three. Electric vehicles, solar panels, and wind turbines. The the holy trinity uh, of the bright green lie bullshit it, it, it's the single biggest lie we have had crammed down our throats in in, in pretty much in my lifetime it, it, it everything about it is unadulterated horseshit electric vehicles solar panels and wind turbines those three that are uh, that that you, you know the clueless morons everybody from joe biden 
to uh, to AOC, to the mainstream media, New York Times, what, whatever, are, are, are going to be ramming the Newsweek magazine Better Planet with their wind turbines going across. Uh, we are going to have an onslaught uh, uh, of this propaganda attack uh, that like, like nothing we have ever seen in our lifetimes and is cradled to grave from, from these, uh, we're old enough to see it and, and, and blow the bullshit whistle on it, Elliot. But these new kids coming up, they're, they're, they're gonna get bombarded with this shit in nursery school. It, 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 it's unadulterated, the, 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 all three of them, all three of them, unadulterated horse shit. Or they, I, I guess those three are on your list. Well, I mean, the question is, when you say ain't gonna happen, what about it ain't going to happen? Um, I mean, the the, an the answer is there's going to be a lot of wind. There's going to be a lot of electric. There's going to be a lot of electric vehicles. But what yeah, is okay. I, 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 but ain't going to happen. It's not going to do a damn thing to save the planet. Right. Uh, because as you were talking about with that, with, with that fellow, as, as I've been saying, and, and Derek Jensen has been saying anything, uh, that that extends global industrial civilization is a death sentence for this planet. And, and, and this whole bullshit about free energy, all of these people and even doomers, uh, it, 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 you know, talking about the the holy grail of free energy. Me, Andy the gardener and I are the only two people that, that and, and a few other people are, are starting to, uh, to, I guess, listen to what I've been saying for years, the, the absolute biggest nightmare of this planet, if we really did, if we really did come up with, with, with absolute free, limitless, clean, green energy, give eight billion uh, apes uh, an unlimited supply of energy. You would watch the Amazon rainforest, it would be gone tomorrow. Uh, it, 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 you know, they, uh, the only reason there's as much of this planet that's left is the inefficiency uh, of all the energy, including fossil fuels. If fossil, if, 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 if there was such a thing as free energy, this planet, it, it couldn't last five years. Uh, it would be the single worst thing. So thank God free energy ain't going to happen. Now these other things, uh, they're, 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 they're quote, going to happen. Uh, you're going to see more of this bullshit, but it ain't going to do a damn thing to save the planet. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, my argument is that it's it's just uh, furthering the destruction of the planet, right? That the more uh, I just saw, um, I, I've been looking at the largest solar arrays on the planet. One right. of my projects earlier today was to kind of track down the largest solar farms yeah. that they're building, and these things are huge. They're they're you know ten thousand acres yeah. of solar panels, and and you know they. They're bragging that this um, powers 400,000 households. Well, there's 8 billion people on the planet, right? <laughs> so so 400,000 households, you know, that uh, there's 4 million households in Los Angeles alone, right? So well, they would need something you 10 see, times as large that, as right? that, you know, just to cover Los Angeles. Yeah, um, have you seen Planet of the Humans? Oh yeah, That's yeah, the, yeah. Where, where yeah. he's in there on a fairly small thing, probably a, a maybe ten or twenty acres, and, and, and the and the town is coming out with the mayor and the river, and, and the guy is uh, who's doing the movie. I can't remember, and it's not Michael Moore who made that. It's the other guy who never gets any credit for actually making the movie. Uh, you know, it says at the he just very kind. It says, well, how many? How many homes in your town? Like twelve or something. Sixteen. Just sixteen. Oh, this is gonna this is gonna power sixteen homes, and the guy goes like sixteen, and then, then, then it, you know, like the hand over the camera, and, and the guy, uh, <laughs> and, the, and the guy walks off. Yeah, and, no. So, so yeah, the the I am. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm just kind of sad about that part of this whole thing. Okay, save the soils. You know that that whole thing. We're going to save the soils uh, as a whole green tech thing. Uh, cleaning up the uh, forever chemicals. 
uh, ending plastic uh, packaging, uh, planting a trillion trees and the vegan diet. That's kind of what I have. I didn't put the bright green lies. I love that category. I have to put that category into mind. Actually, yeah, you well, well, obviously there's the, there's the kid sisters of the of the holy uh, trinity. Uh, well, you, you, nuclear fusion, hydroelectric, geothermal, wave power. Right. Uh, yeah. all, all of them. They 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 might each one make a tiny tiny dent but when you weigh out the environmental damage uh that any of these energy systems what well, you have the you, you have the two-pronged effect you, you have the initial environmental destruction caused by the green clean technology like like hydropower flooding out uh the half the half the Amazon, you know, I've said many times, I, I actually wrote a guidebook on the waterfalls of Costa Rica. I have it, you can find it, Puerto Vida, the waterfalls and hot springs of Costa Rica. Uh, if you can still find the book, it won't do you any good because every damn one of those beautiful waterfalls and, and, and those and, and those jungle canyons in Costa Rica were flooded out by and so every time you pick up an article about Costa Rica and, and they're talking about uh, how it's the poster child and I'm thinking of those gorgeous you, you, you know irreplaceable uh, tropical ecosystems that were destroyed, obliterated off the face of this planet so they, they could put in those bullshit hydroelectric dams where those beautiful waterfalls used to stand and, and, and now holding up Costa Rica. Costa Rica is an environmental criminal. It's one of the biggest, most environmentally criminal plant countries on this planet. I lived there for seven years. Well, I mean, I lived in Costa Rica for three years. Uh, and, and was traveling all through there for seven years. Uh, it, it, it's an absolute and environmental devastation uh, what happened in Costa Rica. I, I get so sick and tired of that crap. Uh, and the UN does it, holding up, uh, you know, Guterres holding up Costa Rica as some shining city on the hill that we should all aspire to. Well, we're ripping out dams here in the U.S., thank God, it's about time. Anyway, so, Sam, uh, Sam, I want to get you back on track here just a little bit. Yeah. I got a couple right. others I just want to run by you. Am I getting off on a rant? A little bit. I just Okay, <laughs> I'll calm down. I'll let me have another. Yeah. It's fine, it's fine. I, I totally am with you on the ranting, but but... The topic is ain't gonna happen. Um, you know, all these people about talk about banning private jets, like like uh yeah. you know, Taylor Swift banning the private jets, um, or the mega yachts. You think we're gonna ban the mega yachts anytime soon? I um, uh well we didn't we just have the world's biggest cruise ship launched uh, last week in the history of mankind. Uh eight thousand people in 2000 with the 2000 grand we had 10 thousand humans on one boat in, in about a sustainable cruising that was in the the, the, the new yeah they the kept cruising. on talking about how sustainable it was yeah no um okay i got one that that comes up a lot um quantum computers and ai fixing fixing everything for us I for 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 every that that's going to be one step forward, ten steps back. For 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 every for every benefit uh, that shit brings to this planet, it's going to bring nine uh, in the debit column. Uh, it, so yeah, they they're going they're going to be able, Elliot. They're they're going to be able to pull up examples of how it did work in favor of the planet. But what they're not going to talk about is the nine counter, uh, you know, counterbalancing. Right. You're not going to hear about those from, from these little, from these little greenies. Um, I'm going to go completely off track here. I'm going to say one more to you. Do you All think right. we'll ever have anything like the ministry of the future, you know, an actual organization of, um, 
let's call let's call them terrorists or rebels or you know some some group of people are saying we have the authority to do whatever we need to save the planet uh and we've been authorized you know to to um take whatever action i don't know if you read that book or not but but it, it's pretty wild what what you know if you if you have the authority to save the planet you know ultimate authority what you might actually do well i've always you know for years been holding out hope that little nine-year-old hindu boy in the mud hut in pakistan to uh to cover that job i, I i'm going somewhere on this planet, there's a nine-year-old Hindu boy in a mud in a mud floor hut in Pakistan that's going to figure this out. Uh, I, I put as much faith in him uh, as I do the Ministry of the Future. Uh, more faith. Uh, All right, my and, friend. What uh, else do you have? We're we're kind of winding this down. I have. I have two more very short categories with, with three in each one that I'm at the end of my 30. So the, the, the food production, how to feed the, this uh, and, and that we haven't talked about. I got four in here. GMOs, regenerative agriculture oh, oh yes I mean, I yes yes yes, yes. You, you slipped up in that interview with that with, with that dude you should have just said ain't gonna happen shut <laughs> up ain't gonna happen probably uh, i probably should have said that several times he's a great guy is not gonna regenerative agriculture right is, is every bit an oxymoron as green energy or military uh, intelligence. intelligence yeah. There is nothing regenerative about agriculture. I don't give a shit what kind of agriculture it is. Agriculture of any form is degenerative. Okay. A ag agriculture, we're, we're not going to fix agriculture. We're, we're not going to, you know, to, to tweak it with your little GMOs, regenerate it by by rolling your chicken coop around your property it it, it might work on a, on your three acre mini farm it ain't going to work on a planet and uh and my two favorites i think vertical farming uh where, where i mean it's seen it. okay i do think vertical farming uh, I've grown a lot of lettuce in my life, and understand I'm a lifelong organic farmer. Uh, I, I do think we can feed one billion people salad out of vertical farming. Okay, so the salad bar is covered for one eighth of the planet, and then the latest one that we are seeing more and more of is seaweed. Oh yeah, um, yeah, 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 absolutely. Just going to eat seaweed. When this was one I was just reading just recently, this is post nuclear apocalypse. Post nuclear apocalypse, the way we're going to come out of the nuclear winter is we're just going to eat seaweed. We're just going to eat seaweed for for like three years until the sun reappears from behind, from behind the rubble. <laughs> And just go right on, just go right on about our business. Just eat seaweed for, for two or three years, dude. Shut up, wine, and eat your fucking seaweed. And, and uh, global industrial civilization will go right on after a nuclear apocalypse. Uh, you know, I don't what, what could you, you know, you damn negative doomers. Well, I don't you know, need no solution. It it does have a lot of iodine in it, you know. That'll help with your thyroid cancer. No, no, no. <laughs> that was actually in the article. Oh. Yes, it was a, <laughs> that is a natural form of iodine. Oh, All shit. joking aside, Elliot, they're actually promoting it. The iodine in the seaweed to 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 help counteract your, the the skin peeling off the front of your damn face. <laughs> Okay. And they're doing it, and the mainstream media is reporting this without an ounce of irony. Okay, great. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go as far from that as I possibly can with my my last one. 
And then I got my last one. You do your last one and I'll do my last that one. We are start. somehow going to reconstruct global civilization so that we are now following in the footsteps of noble savages and living <laughs> and living a life that's in harmony with nature and harmony with each other. And, uh, you know, we're, because that has happened many times. If we yeah. just look to this, yeah. you know, and so all we need to do is model our societies after these societies that have been successfully harmonious with nature. And if we just did that for 8 billion people, yeah. we could, there, there's plenty of food for everybody. And um, yeah, so that's it. The Kumbaya Noble model, the, the Kumbaya model you're talking about. I cannot believe I left Noble Savages off of, off of the, uh, uh, off of the list. I cannot believe that noble savages did not uh that that noble savages are going to save the planet yeah now, well that even I, the ones that are already here are going to save the planet or we're all going to become them by as you say by singing kumbaya together yeah i i think it's a pretty important ain't gonna happen sam i'm, I'm ah, surprised yes. <laughs> you have talked plenty of times about that so that, your... that, that, that could be a whole uh list and sub i can't I, I left that whole category out but I've gotten myself in enough trouble with the noble savage and the vegans and the immigration. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. What's your last one, Sam? All right. My last one that we haven't, uh, I think you might have touched about, is the whole plastic uh, pollution, uh, which does get a little bit of attention even in the mainstream media. But uh, the ones that they promote, uh, the, the big three, recycling, well, that's the big one. Uh, in, 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 what are we up to? Our, our, I think we got up to 9%, and now we're back down to like 4%. We got up to like 9% 20 years ago, but then uh, China and everybody stopped accepting this stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, they're talking about that, that we are – if you follow the curve and and, and it just, just on the curve, since that famous line then from the graduate, you know, plastics in 1967, you take the curve from that famous line and night when that guy was, you know, telling Benjamin uh, what to invest in. If you're 21 years old in 1967 and, and, and you want to be a millionaire, plastics, it, it was the single greatest prophetic prediction 1967, and if you just follow that line, that in 2050, we're going to be making three times as much plastic as we're making in 2020 and 30 years. It's going to be three times as much. And, and, and this is, everybody's agreeing on this, you know, from both ends of the thing. And so we're going to fix that recycling plant-based plastics bioplastics, plastic eating fungi. Oh yeah, I've and, heard that. And those little, uh, and, and the final one is those little nets that they drag through the ocean, you, you know, those little, and, and, and just pick it up. And uh, and so the, the plastic pollution, uh, it, it's that one alone, and, it, and, and I don't talk about it enough on my own channel. That one alone, uh, what we've unleashed on this planet, where I, I, I don't think we've begun to understand yeah, it's the a, it, level of hell that we've unleashed on this planet with, with those goddamn things. And, and I mean, look around, I mean, in any room, this computer, the, these glasses, uh, the, the cap to my margarita glass. Uh, the, the the first thing that 99% of us touch in the morning when we wake up is some form of plastic. And the last thing that we touch before we go to bed at, tonight, it will be with me. If you, if you turn, if you reach up to your, to your bedside light and get that little switch and turn it, the last thing your finger is going to touch before you go to bed tonight is a piece of plastic and my guess is uh, the first thing you touch tomorrow morning is going to be a piece of plastic. And every one of us on the planet, every single one of us, are where we're, we're, we're more addicted. And of course, it's a fossil fuel product. Yeah. But we're more addicted to plastic than we are 
oil, but it, but it's all the it, 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 it's just two it's just two twin sisters, and uh, this plastic thing nobody is taking this serious. So with with, with nothing else, with uh, eight billion people you, you, using plastic every day. Uh, that's Sam, my Sam, I, I have one more, and we should close out. We've been going for just over an hour okay. now, but I have one more All right. that is kind of happening, but it's not going to save anything at all. And this is probably the biggest one of all. All, all right. right. That, that neither one of us has mentioned. Okay. Sam, yeah. we've got to have hope. You have to have hope. If you don't have hope, how are you going to save the planet without hope? I mean, I'm telling you, Sam, it's all hope. <laughs> yeah, I know, Sam. You're like, no, don't make me say the word. <laughs> Wishing, I'm going to use the W word instead of the H word because I could never get it out. Wish in one hand, shit in the other. See which one fills up first. That's <laughs> all that needs to be said on that whole dreary subject. Yeah. But it's yeah. all the doomers' fault. It, it, it's, it's all of us negative. It's our fault because we are not taking action. So, so uh, I just want to I just want to say that like like <laughs> the whole motivation of this thing, just like in closing for me personally, right? The whole motivation for this is when I read stories about climate or, or collapse or, or what people want to do, it's always um, with starts with the phrase, we, we yeah. have to, we should, yeah. we ought to, we must. Right. So it always starts with we. And so when I see that word, we, I'm always <laughs> triggered by that. Cause I know what that really means is, is this person is prescribing a thing to do that with the belief that that's going to have some sort of impact to change sort of the inevitable future that we're at. And I collect these things. I Can I read you a couple of these in closing? A couple of my it, ways. It, 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 as long as you, as long as I can uh, sum up the, the last we at the end of it. Yeah, let's hear some of them. From Peter Kalmus, the NASA's climate scientist. Who I like. I like Peter. He's oh, cool. I love him. Climate yeah. science rebellion. Okay. Everyone, I am begging you. Every time you learn of a new climate-related disaster, please recognize that it will get worse and worse and worse and worse every year until we end the fossil fuel industry. There you go. Right. So um, <laughs> even Peter Kalmus. Right. I have a, a lot of respect for even he falls into that we trap. Right. Professor Julia Steinberger, an, a climate scientist. Vaguely recognize that name. Yeah. I don't know why people are trying to make a huge fuss about whether or not 1.5 degrees is still within reach or not. It makes zero difference to what we need to do, which is cancel fossil fuels and animal based agriculture as soon as possible. Yeah. Yeah. I got another one here. I'm going to do uh, Catherine Hayhoe. You know her? Oh, yes, my favorite. Hayhoe. <laughs> Luckily, we know what we have to do. There you go. <laughs> Namely, drop emissions to keep the global temperature from rising to 1.5 Celsius while still prioritizing biodiversity and human populations. Oh, yes. Michael Mann? There we go. The king of we. But we <laughs> can't allow the forces of inaction to convince us these actions alone are the solutions and that we don't need systemic changes like ending capitalism. I don't know. And finally, one from Bernie Sanders. All right, it's my last. Okay, one. Senator Michael Bernie Mann Sanders. And Bernie Sanders. There's a parrot. If we don't act boldly, then the world we are going to leave our children and our grandchildren will be increasingly unhealthy and uninhabitable. We have a moral responsibility to make sure that does not happen. So that those are my uh, my summation here. Uh, you you want the Sam Mitchell? We quote, it's two they, words, we won't. We won't. 
That's we won't, but so you can put that one in the in Sam Mitchell Collapse Chronicles at the end of your list. I want you to. I want to be right under Bernie Sanders and Michael Mann. Uh, Sam Mitchell. We won't. Okay. That, that's all you need to say about it. There, there's one word that needs to follow the word we, and that's won't. Ain't all right. Ain't we won't. Happen. Sam Mitchell. All right. <laughs> I love it, Sam. Sam, this has just been great. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been fun. Fam, fabulous going through this with you. And and again, thanks so much for the whole idea of the Ain't Gonna Happen. Lift, so, you know. All right. So let's invite all the, who do we piss off? The we, vegans, pretty much everybody. The savages. Everybody. The, uh, uh, the immigration people. Uh, Population. Anybody, uh, yeah, I'm a racist, eugenicist, uh, whatever. Bring it on. Give me your best shot. <laughs> All right, Sam. Sam, stick around. I'm going to end the recording, but let's stick around and chat a little bit. All right, my Bye, friend. guys. I will right, we'll see you. Bye.